Welcome back to Upside Down Data. Let's talk about how high quant could realistically go in a full bull market. So first, let's just give some context of what is quant. And quant is a number of things. Obviously, I'm not going to go into full details here, way more than the scope of this video. But the main thrust of quant is really this interoperability layer, trying to bring a bunch of different blockchains and allow them to communicate with each other. One of the limitations of blockchain technology right now is they tend to be relatively isolated. Something like Ethereum, it's hard for it to just communicate with something like Bitcoin, for example. They're two separate ledgers and special additional things need to be built to allow them to communicate with each other. And Quant is trying to make a generalizable framework for that type of interoperability. Now that's just one thing they do, they do other things, but that's the main thrust of Quant, at least in my evaluation looking at the project. So it is an exciting time in crypto right now. It sure seems like we're about to head into a full bull market. We are starting a new year here in 2024, and things have been off to a good start really ever since the end of last year, really October of last year. So Quant is up notably off the lows there from October. But if we are entering into a new bull market, we would expect it to go a lot higher than this most likely. But the question then is how much higher could it realistically go? You know, in a full bull market, people are going to give a lot of different predictions of price for assets like Quant and others. But what should we take seriously? What is actually a reasonable expectation versus just hype and emotion that's likely to just lead people astray? So what I like to do to answer this question is use a data driven approach. Think about what do we know and how can we use that to frame our understanding of what might come, of what is plausible? So if you've seen other videos that I've made, you're familiar with this approach, but basically what I do is I first create a machine learning based model that gives a rough idea of what a reasonable price for quant should be at a given point in time. And it generally tracks the overall price fairly well. Now there are gonna be times when the price deviates, it bubbles up or above or below this kind of expected value or fair value for quant. But generally speaking, it gives a good rough idea of where Quant's price should be. And this model takes in three inputs. It takes in the price of Bitcoin, the price of Ethereum, and time. And the reason for this is that, as I mentioned before, we want to use things that we know, things that we already know to be true. The problem with some of people's analysis of assets like Quant is they try to do it based on fundamentals, and they say X will happen, and that will lead to Y happening to price. But the problem is we don't really know that. We don't know how any given new fundamental development would, if it has any effect on price. And all of that is very speculative. So what I do here instead is look at how does quant tend to relate to market dynamics that we know about, like Bitcoin and Ethereum, they tend to lead the crypto space. Where they go, other assets tend to follow. And then based on what those assets are doing, Bitcoin and Ethereum, we can get a pretty good sense of where we'd expect quant to be just based on history. So we're leaving out all that subjective evaluation of fundamentals and things like that that are really hard to actually link to price in a meaningful way. And we're just said looking at how quant tends to relate to these other things that we do know about and we have historical data to learn from. And then also time as just another factor to kind of catch the things that Bitcoin and Ethereum might not be catching up on. So basically the idea of this model then is we can ask it questions. Once we have that model, we can say, okay, given some date in the future, and given some hypothetical Bitcoin price and some hypothetical ETH price, what would the expected quant price be at that point in time? I mean, you see this in a more bullish scenario. So let's say Bitcoin's up at 200K, ETH is at 20K, then the predicted quant price would be up at $852, notably higher than where it's trading right now. In a more bearish scenario for a bull market, we'd have Bitcoin, for example, at 80K, ETH at 9K, that have a quant predicted price of 566 dollars. So this is useful, but in some ways, this is not very satisfactory. And I've talked about this before in other videos where why do we think that these particular sets of inputs should mean anything? And the answer is they don't. These were just ones that I randomly grabbed out of my head. But we shouldn't just look at two examples as being all that meaningful. And that's why I like to use a simulation based approach. Once we have that machine learning model, we can then do this approach to get a better idea of what is a realistic expectation for a bull market. So basically what we do is we take our three inputs and we figure out realistic ranges that they might fall in in some, let's say, bull market topping scenario. And I think most people would expect Bitcoin to top out somewhere in this range, prior all-time high to about five times that level, ETH between its prior all-time high and about six times that level, and then dates somewhere in here, somewhere between mid-2024 
and mid 2026 if history is a guide the bull market would probably end or peak out somewhere in that general range then what we do is we basically just randomly sample from these ranges we take a random bitcoin price from these ranges eth price and date and then we see what does the model say that it would expect quants price to be in that scenario we record that and then we do it again and again and we do it ten thousand times and what that gives us is a distribution of predicted quant prices in these different radically different bull market scenarios so kind of all these random different combinations of these inputs where would we kind of on average expect quant to fall where would its median be etc so what we can do then is we can get some summary statistics so based on that we have a full distribution of those different simulations show that in a minute but just to give us some summary idea of what we find here we have a mean predicted quant price of 827 dollars not too bad median price is a bit lower 793 this basically means there are some extreme outliers that are biasing the mean up towards them so me the median is the middle price that's so less affected by those outliers we then have the 10th percentile and the 90th percentile as well just to give a sense of where things fall from that perspective so 10 percent of the simulations fell below 358 dollars 10 percent fell above 1334 80 percent then fell in between those two values so if we just go and look at the actual distribution, we can see our median and our mean price here, uh, a bit above 800 for the mean, a bit below for the median. But it generally speaking, things clustering in this general range. And then we do have this long tail, and this is why the mean is, is higher than the median. We have this tail of some extreme values where in some situations, the model would actually expect quant to do quite well and get really high, up above $2,200. But that is not very often that that is happening and most simulations are falling down in this general area so the mean and the median are probably good rough ballpark ideas of where we might expect quant to fall but again there's, there's a distribution things would fall below things would fall above with the median literally half are falling below that half are falling above so it's not supposed to be taken as gospel but just a central tendency the overall clustering kind of on average of where things fall with of course a distribution around that so let's now put this into perspective. What would this mean for quant if it did this, if it got and reached the median price or the mean price from these simulations? So when we look at the chart, it would be a pretty nice return for quant if it hit those median and mean values. We can see that the median value would be a 466% move from current levels, quite nice. And then the mean value would be a 490% move to the upside from there. So obviously it's up to any individual to evaluate that and make their own opinion. None of this is financial advice, of course. And also I should mention, of course, that any evaluation of this is separate from anyone's subjective evaluations of the fundamentals. That's also something that I leave to the viewer to do for themselves. I'm not gonna tell you whether or not quant is a good or bad project. This is up for you to decide. This is just using the data as I've described it to get an idea of what might be realistic in a bull market and the reason why i think this is a useful approach is that as i mentioned at the beginning of the video in a full bull market there tends to be a lot of hype a lot of emotion and what you'll see is that as price moves up people will continue moving the goalposts they'll say oh was i calling for 500 dollars quant now suddenly i'm calling for a thousand dollar quant and then if we get higher then they'll call for two thousand or five thousand they'll just keep going up and up and up but really that's not realistic it's going to top out somewhere and what this type of analysis does is before we get there, so assuming we are going into a full bull market, before we get into that mania, that hype, that can be really distracting and can lead people to get incorrect ideas that can then lead them to not sell when they really should be, for example, and then get hold, stuck holding the bag as things collapse. To give us an idea, a grounded idea of what might be plausible for quant in a bull market, then when we get there, we can make an evaluation. We can say, all right, should we listen to the people continue moving the goalposts or is it actually seem reasonable that this might be about as high as we go? Now, of course, there is variability. These are just the mean and median values. So we could easily end up higher from just the simulations ideas of what might be plausible. But I do think it's useful to keep these values in mind and just think, all right, if we get there, then we should just be cautious and not necessarily just listen to all the hype and the, and the emotion that's out there, but think about what is plausible and what's actually supported by the data so again not financial advice you should make your own opinions but that's the reason why i like to do these analyses to give that idea before we get into that really emotional place where it's a lot harder to evaluate things objectively all right if you like the content or subscribe to the channel give the video a like and follow us on x 
A lot of updates about our models and more over there. And also go to our website, partydigital.io, link in the description for live data from our models and more.